Welcome to another video in the SAP configuration from zero playlist where our objective is to start the configuration on SAP S4 HANA from zero until we are able to run a complete procure to pay process with a purchase order, goods receipt and an invoice receipt. To see where we are in the playlist, because I think this is the video number 12 or 13, you can go to my website, galalconsulting.com slash courses or galalconsulting.com and then from the menu here, you go to courses, SAP configuration course, you will find this page that has a diagram showing everything that we have explained so far in this playlist. And in each box, you can click to be directed immediately to the video in the playlist on YouTube. So in the last video, we did the goods receipt. So now we started with the configuration of the company code, purchase organization, everything until we created a purchase order. And in the last video, we succeeded in posting the goods receipt after solving a lot of missing configuration issues. Now in the video today, we will continue the process with the invoice receipt. So let's go to our SAP system. And here I'm displaying the purchase order that we created together. So this is transaction ME23N that we can use to display a purchase order. This is the transaction code ME23N. And then I inserted our purchase order. You can find this in the history of the playlist. We created it together. So far, we only have one item here and we have received this item. So if I look here into the purchase order history, you can see that we have a goods receipt. So this is the goods receipt we posted together. And I did not show you the accounting entry that we configured. So let's go to the accounting, to the material document, just to check quickly the accounting document that we posted. So this is the goods receipt we posted together. If I go here to document information, if I documents, we have an accounting document and a material ledger document. Both of these we configured together. See how nice this is when we configure things from zero. Everything that happens is something that we configured. This is nice. So now if we go to accounting document, we have a debit to our raw account stock that we defined and the credit to the GRIR as stock. The debit is coming from transaction BSX. The credit is WRX that we defined in the account determination. And we created these two GL accounts together. The value is 100 because we have 10 pieces multiplied by 10 units, which is 100 euros according to our purchase order. So now let's go back to the purchase order. And the next step is to post the invoice receipt. So I'm going to copy the PO number. And if we succeed in posting the invoice receipt without any errors, this will be the end of the procure to pay process for us. Then we'll switch to the order to cash process. So now let's switch. Let's go to the invoice receipt transaction, M-I-R-O. So slash O, M-I-R-O, the purchase order number. Enter a valid date. So let's say this is on 17, 10, 2025. And now we have here the total value is 100 EUR. So I'm going to insert 100 EUR here. Maybe we need to insert some taxes. I do not want to use taxes because it will make things more complicated, but let's see what will happen. No amount authorization for customer vendor in company code AG60. This sounds like something is missing in the configuration. So let's go to help. No amount authorization for customer vendor company code AG60. The no amount authorization for the user group to which you are assigned, provide that you are not explicitly assigned to a user group. If you entered correct company code, initial, initiate the maintenance table T043 and or T043T. Let's see what this is. Okay. So something is missing in the configuration. We do have our correct company code here, AG60, but there's something missing. So let's display the table, slash OSE16N. This is the table that we got in the error, T043. So what is this? Assign accounting clerk to tolerance group. Okay. So this table will have the username and the tolerance groups. I know that there is a tolerance group that's empty that will apply to any username that's not assigned here. So this is not our issue. What is the other table that was in the error? Let's go back and look again in the message. There is another company code that's mentioned here. So T043T. Let's see what this is. So again, go to SE16N. T043T. And here we have the company codes. Okay, so let's see what we have inside. 
So now here we have the different company codes and for each company code we have some tolerances, some values and we don't have our company code AG60 is not here because we did not maintain it. So this is a missing configuration activity. What we can do now is look for the error message on Google to get where the configuration activity is or the other way that I showed you in the last video we go to slash nsm30 and here we insert t043t and we click on customizing. This will show us where this table is in the configuration menu. I honestly do not remember this now. I know what this error is. I have seen this configuration step before, but I don't remember where it is in the configuration menu. So I even use this trick in real life to get to find the configuration menus. So now we have here defined trends groups under logistics invoice verification. We have another one for accounts payable and payable. We have one for financial account and global settings. These are not Maybe they are related to us, but this is not what we are doing now. What we are doing is logistics invoice verification. So I will go with this one. Of course, if it's not the right one, we can always go back and check another activity. So where are we? We are in the material management, logistics invoice verification, authorization management, define tolerance group. So let's execute this. And here we have the different company codes, including the standard one, which is 0001. And here, as you see, this is what we have. So we have permitted payment differences, revenue is 100 or 10%, expense is 100 or 10%, whichever is lower, is lower. And here we have the amount per document, so this is the maximum, and the amount per item, this is the maximum, and cash discount per line item. So what this is, it is a tolerance for the posting of the invoice receipt. There was a similar tolerance for goods receipt, which compares the value that we are posting to stock, with the moving average of the item that we are receiving and we maintained it together. Now this tolerance is different. For example, if I have an invoice that should be, if I have a purchase order for 100, as is our, as our case now, we have a purchase order for 100 euros, but imagine I try to post an invoice for 1000 euros. By mistake, we inserted an additional zero, for example. Then in this case, the system is not going to accept because there is a tolerance of 10% or, or 100 euros maximum whichever is lower. This is an extreme example, but sometimes, for example, we have a purchase order for 100, but the, the vendor sent us an invoice for 150 for any reason, because they changed the prices, they changed the terms and so on. So this invoice shouldn't be posted, shouldn't be accepted. It should give an error message until we analyze why we have this, and then we see if we pass it or not. So now let's go back, and I'm going to copy this entry to my company code. All right, so company code AG60. And I will keep the same tolerances and save. Put it on a transport request. Done. Now let's go back to our invoice receipt. And again, we try to post. No amount authorization for customer vendors. So we have to restart the transaction slash NMIRO. Again, we insert the date. We insert the purchase order. and we insert the amount. Enter a tax code. So we need a tax code. So here I will choose no input tax, V0. And then here in the basic data, specify payment period baseline date. Okay, so baseline date is 17, 10, 2025. And then here I will also choose no input tax, same code, enter. And then we click on simulate to simulate the accounting entry and make sure we don't have any other errors. Invoice document still contains messages. Okay, we are actually depending on this to fix our configuration, so this is nice. We have an error. Table T169V entry does not exist. It looks like another configuration is missing. So let's go inside. We don't have a lot of details here, so again, we follow the same process. I'm not going to get into this error in this video. We already have a recording of around 12 minutes. After editing, maybe eight minutes, which is nice for a video. So we will end this video here, and we will continue with this error message in the next video. So what have we done so far in this playlist? We displayed our purchase order. We have checked the accounting entry for the goods receipt, and then we started posting the invoice receipt. We got an error for the invoice receipt tolerance limit, and we maintain the configuration to fix this error. Your homework after watching this video is to go to your SCAP testing system and configure the tolerance limits for invoice verification as we did. Maybe go to Google and look for SCAP invoice tolerance limits 
try to read a little about this topic and also do not forget to check the diagram on the website to see where we are in the playlist and if there are any other videos that I posted after this one because I will keep updating this diagram every time I post a new video. If you do not have access to an SAP testing system to follow these steps, you can join me in the SAP system I am using now. You go to my website, galebconsulting.com, and you go to services SAP access. From here, you'll be able to subscribe to the server online and you get a user ID within one day, which allows you to configure anything you want. I hope the video was useful and easy to understand. Do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel Check the channel membership program if you would like to get access to member exclusive videos, documents and our private Slack group where you can chat with me and the other members. And above all, if you would like to support this effort being done on the channel. Also, do not forget to leave me some comments on that diagram on my website, galadconsulting.com slash courses. There is a comments section there and I would really be happy to see your comments on the diagram to know if you are checking this diagram, if anyone is using this or if it is not a good idea, let me know. Also, don't forget to leave me your comments on the video itself on YouTube. Let me know if you have any questions, if you want me to add anything to this playlist, or if you want me to change the way I explain things. I read all the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.